saw the thunder and lightning, and heard the trumpet, and saw the mountain and smoke, they trembled with fear. They stayed at a distance, and said to Moses, Speak to us yourself, and we will listen. But do not have God speak to us, or we will die. Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. God has come to test you, so that the fear of God will be with you to keep you from sinning. The people remained at a distance, while Moses approached the thick darkness where God was. Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell the Israelites this, You have seen for yourselves that I have spoken to you from heaven. Do not make any gods to be alongside me. Do not make for yourselves gods of silver or gods of gold. Make an altar of earth for me and sacrifice on it your burnt offerings 
and fellowship offerings, your sheep and goats and your cattle. Wherever I cause my name to be honored, I will come to you and bless you. If you make an altar of stones for me, do not build it with dressed stones, for you will defile it if you use a tool on it. And do not go up to my altar on steps, lest your nakedness be exposed on it. These are the laws you are to set before them.
to bear that fruit out. But when he say there's a shadow of things to come, that's what he's talking about. As we see those pictures of a shadow, it's not the complete image. It's just a thing that we're doing. It's a thing that you should be doing. But the real image, the real thing is going to come when the Messiah comes back. And that's when you'll see the wholeness of it. Continue on, should we keep it or not? We're going to go to Leviticus 23. In Leviticus 23, um, that's basically on all the feast days. Um, it's the feast days of our Father. It's not my feast days. It's not Jewish feast days. It's not Judas feast days. It's not those Israeli feast days. Whatever. It's the feast days of Yah. It's the feast days of your Father. Um, we look at Leviticus 23, 2, and speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, Concerning the feast days of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, even these are my feasts. So again, just to make it clear, they're the Father's feasts. They're your feasts, they're not mine. Um, Leviticus 23, 24, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying in the seventh month, in the first day of the month shall ye have a Sabbath, a memorial of the blowing of the trumpets, and holy convocation. So the Father, on the seventh month of his calendar, not man's calendar, ye should blow the trumpets. Again, it's a memorial of what he's already done and what he will do. And you're supposed to have an assembly for that. You see that in Leviticus 23-24. Um, Leviticus 23-31. You shall do no matter of work. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations in all your dwellings. Again, the Father says this should be forever. Um, again, um, men, the, um, the church is constituted nowadays. Remember what the Father says. Very few will make it there. So, um, you'll take the churches nowadays and they don't listen to good doctrine. And what good doctrine is, is Genesis, Esther, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, everything you find in the Bible. You'll go to things like hermeneutics or other books of South Side of the Bible, which the churches build their whole foundation on, and they'll tell you forever don't mean forever. Um, in the Hebrew, it means two things. One, it means forever is all your life until you die, or the other forever is until when the Messiah comes back again. Either way, it's forever for you. But here he tells you to keep it throughout your generations. So your generations, your children's generations, your great-grandchildren generations, your mama, your great-grandma, all those things. Those are generations. And he says keep them forever. Uh, we're going to look at Leviticus 23, 36. Seven days you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. On the eighth day you shall be a holy convocation unto you, and you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. It's a solemn assembly, and you should do no servile work. And again, this one's more this one's on tabernacles, but again we're looking at all the feast days in Leviticus twenty three. I just want you to know that he wants you to do the feast days forever. He said they're an assembly. And what we need to know now, if you look at the Hebrew what does it mean when he says a feast day? And a feast day is an appointed time. That's what it meant for Hebrew. It doesn't mean to have a big meal, good stuff. It doesn't mean to go eat a whole bunch of pig. It doesn't mean to have um, Thanksgiving. A feast, a feast day, but it was translated out of the Hebrew, the Moed, the Moedim. It means an appointed time. And again, whose appointed time? It's the Father's appointed time. So if you look at Leviticus 23, he gives you an exact time and place for all these things. He tells you to have holy convocations, their assemblies, and that means they're his appointed times. Not mine, not yours, it's the Father's. And again, you're supposed to have the same faith with all the um, forefathers that came before you, um, your Messiah, um, Yeshua, Hamashiach, um, Jesus in English, he kept all the feast days. Moses, Paul, Abraham, whoever you want to talk about, they kept the feast days. Okay? And again, it means a point in time. Now we're going to look at Hebrews 10.25. And again, if you 
go to church on Sunday, they'll take the scripture out and say, hey, you're supposed to assemble on Sunday. That's what the scripture says. So, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much of more as ye see the day approaching. The day approaching is supposed to be what we're teaching on today, and that's the trumpets. That's what he's alluding to. But he said, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves. Again, don't let no man fool you. Assembling, just like we've seen in the feast days, is his appointed times. Somebody can't tell you to assemble on Sunday and take this verse out of context. Because again, we looked at those verses that came before and it tells you exactly when he wants you to assemble. It's not when you want to assemble. Um, Aaron tried that himself in Exodus. And when he was going to make a, a feast day to the Father. Yeah, he was there. He told him he couldn't do it. He was a priest that knew more than any other minister you have here nowadays. And he couldn't do it. So the assembly, the assembling is not on any man's time. It's the Father's time. So in Hebrews 10.25, he said, Not uh, forsake the assembling of ourselves. So again, we got to look to the Word that tells you when we say assemble. we got to look at Numbers 29.1. And in the seventh month, on the first day of the month, you should have a holy convocation. You should do no serve our work. It is a day of the blowing of the trumpets unto you. So we see in Numbers 29, it tells you when and what you should do. It's a blowing of the trumpets, and you're supposed to do no serve our work. It's a holy convocation. It's an assembly. You're supposed to do it. We look at another prophet. We'll look at Joel 2.15. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly. Again, Hebrews 10 25 says, Don't take the assembly of yourself. Joel tells you when to assemble. If it matches up with the feast days itself. Joel 2 16, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children, these that suck the breast, let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber, and the bride out of her closet. So, we are supposed to assemble on the blowing of the trumpets. Um, it tells you when, it tells you how long, forever throughout your generations. Hopefully that point is clear. If anybody's telling you, again, like um, you see in Colossians 2, 14, let no man deceive you with vain deceit after their own philosophy, after their own doctrines. Remember the Bible, the word of our Father explains itself. When he tells you to assemble, he tells you what time. He would not leave you in the dark for you to figure out your own time to assemble. He tells you when. When he tells you what the elect is, he tells you exactly who they are. With that being said, we're going to continue with the word. We're going to look at um, what the feast days actually mean. So I hope you understand that you should keep the um, blowing of the trumpet as well as all the feast days. But we're only focusing on the feast days of the trumpet. Um, the blowing of the trumpet, we're going to continue with that.